Hey, good afternoon. This stream is about financial fraud against you, especially for folks that travel a lot for a living. Like you're out always in different cities, truck drivers, mm -hmm. or even in the city you're in, doesn't matter. But the, these financial frauds with, with the AI are getting really, really bad. And you guys need to be aware of this. The first two things we're gonna tell you is that you wanna always, when you're about to run your card, number one, don't ever use a debit card. Always use a credit card. Always. Don't ever use a debit card when you're out here doing stuff in public, ever. When should you use a debit card? Never. 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 Never, never use a debit card out in public for anything. And, always a credit card. And it's a really simple thing. It's very hard to get your money back once it's gone. It's another story to say that, oh, that's not a charge that I made. And you can fight against that. So it's and easy. We, we've had two of those just since we've been married. Yeah, yeah. And they, they replaced the car. They waived the, they waived the charges because the charges were like seven states away. You never know. But always check for skimmers. Yes. When you're running your when you're running your credit your credit card, or you're at the at the pump, always check for the skimmers, and you'll see right here just how creative they've gotten with those skimmers. And you got to actually tug on them and test. If there's an external reader. Go ahead, give it a tug. See if anything comes loose. And when you go to type in your pin over at the keypad, make sure to cover the top with your other hand, just in case a camera has been installed. But the gas station isn't the only place where you can find a skimmer. Skimming at bank ATMs is up 109% year over year. And then you also want to pay attention to the, what are they called, the QR code? The QR codes, the ones that you put your camera up and it scans and then it gives you information or takes information. Um, yeah. If, if there's a QR code and you're about to scan it with your phone, I would say not to, unless you absolutely know that that's a legit thing because people are putting their own QR code over something you'll see in public and then they're stealing your information that way. Mm -hmm. Now, next, this AI has gotten so crazy that you, one of the current phishing things that's happening for people to be defrauded is they're taking one of your family members voices, replicating it, and then having them call you asking for financial help. Hey, can you wire me some money? Something's happened. It's very dangerous because when that call comes to you, no matter how much you think it's your spouse or your your children or one of your cousins or nieces or nephews, you have to pay attention. Listen to this. Here's how it works. A scammer uploads a short audio clip of your loved one, likely pulled from social media, to a voice cloning program. The scammer then uses the cloned voice to call a family member and pretends they're in trouble and needs money. So yes, scammers can use AI to impersonate people you know over the phone. Person had no idea they were talking to AI, none and they lost money with what happened when they sent the money that they sent based on the call they got asking for help. And I guess one way around that, if you do get a, a distressed call from somebody that you know, especially family, you could always ask them a question that only you and they would know. And that could, again, not necessarily guarantee, but it could help with if it was an AI voice. That's good thinking because if it's, if it's something that only you and that person know and the scammer has no idea, you're gonna find out very quickly. Mm -hmm. Now the next one, you get a text to your phone out of the blue saying, hey, there's some financial fraud going on on your account, your bank account. We need you to call this number right now. Mm -mm. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. You need, to, you need to call that bank itself away from the phone number that's on the screen. Call the bank speak to the fraud department and ask them directly. If you call that number, because see, by the time you get a text like that to your phone directly, by the time that comes in, in the situation from the banking standpoint, that fraudster already has your information. Mm -hmm. They have your phone number, they know what your bank is, they may even have your account numbers. So when you call that number that came up on your phone, if you do that rather than calling the number to the bank itself, you're right in there, you're right in their grip. And you don't ever want to text that number back with any code that's been sent to you. Mm -hmm. Ever. Ever. Now we're telling you all this because people are losing hundreds of thousands of dollars getting wiped out of their accounts in a matter of seconds when they don't understand how sophisticated people have become and how sophisticated AI has become. Let's assume you've done everything that we've told you to do and you still got scammed you still had money wiped out of your account in a matter of seconds. 
and your bank is saying, well, it's going to take two or three months for us to investigate, do this, do that. And it, in the meantime, you're as a person, as a human being, you're petrified. That could be your life savings, which has happened. I will, I'll leave some links to some videos in the description of this video. You'll hear how bad some of these accounts and these stories are. If the bank is not responding quickly, doesn't mean they're not going to respond, but it might take them a while. And really, it doesn't even matter if that's the case. You want to be contacting the Internet Crime Complaint Center at the FBI. IC3. IC3. You see the link on the on the page here? You want to contact the FBI, get them involved. Because even this person, when their money got wiped out of the account and things weren't happening quickly to get their money back in the account, mm -hmm. they reached out to that website, got the FBI involved. The FBI reached out to the bank. And how quickly did they get their money back? <laughs> Very fast, yeah. You like know. within a day or two, yeah. the money was put back in the account by the bank. Because if you use your credit card, mm. I can't speak for a debit card, but if you're using your credit card, you're protected. Mm -hmm. If you're not using your credit card, I don't know what the, what the results could be as far as length of time to possibly get your money back. I just know that if you're a hardworking person and you have 40, 60, 30, 160, $200,000 wiped from your account in a matter of seconds because of this kind of fraud, it's going to take, it's going to take your heart from you, you know? So just pay attention how crazy this has gotten because they can mimic somebody's voice that's close to you. And if they're already reaching out to you to, to do these things, they already have enough information. All they need is one or two more bits of information that they're hoping you'll be stupid enough, stupid enough to give them. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. Thanks for watching. Please protect yourself against financial fraud. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. You guys be good. God bless.